right, everybody, welcome to another range test. This time we've put some supermoto tires and of course the bike has been made road legal <laughs> with all the bells and whistles, literally. So uh, the setup is the same. We are using the Polar Watch to uh, tell us the actual data and current state of charge is 88%. So let's go. I'll be doing easy riding. The premise of this ride is a standard, I would call it kind of a commute type of riding. So it's not a sporty thing, not going really slow to maximize lane. Just driving normally to go from one place to another. So the problem with this ride is it's very fun to ride and with the supermoto wheels on it is just uh, a little bit ridiculous and it's really hard to you know to, to not do this and on that occasion i guess i could also explain how the virtual clutch works here so essentially this is a lever putting out the digital signal and if I got my throttle on and I engage the lever, it's taking power away essentially just like a normal clutch would. So what that enables you to do is to have another way to modulate and control the power that's more or less needed maybe for enduro or, or motocross and things with other hand. But another cool thing about it is you can have a very smooth and mellow other response so it's easy to control and then you use the clutch for like when you need a very fast blip when you need to lift the nose up in a, in a very fast way so that you don't need to do this with the wrist you know uh, so that's kind of the, the thinking behind the virtual clutch So I'll explain another thing to you guys while we ride. So before I said that this is a lever here with a digital signal, well, we're using it as a virtual clutch, but we're using it also as a regenerative brake. So when my throttle is off and I pull the lever, it brakes the bike. And it's actually the motor doing the braking and the motor, when it's braking, it's acting as a generator and it's filling up the battery. So we're able to recoup some of that kinetic energy going downhill, braking to recharge uh, the battery again. And it's better than just passive regen like you have, like when you're off the throttle and you just, and the engine's braking a little bit. You know, it's always constant, you're not able to control it, but with a lever, with a with an active regenerative brake, you can control how much braking you need, and it feels just like a normal mechanical brake, and recharge the batteries. And another cool thing, again, with a green digital, you can, you know, program it to do whatever you want. So what we did here, we integrated also 
sort of like an anti-lock system so the brake will will let the tire brake up to a certain speed and then it will not brake anymore so in practice what you get is that you're able to skip the tire around so you're able to pivot the bike if you need to but it doesn't lock up completely like it does with a mechanical brake so what that enables you to do is you have more control when you are using this uh, regen brake as a way to skip the bike around off-road of course supermoto supermoto is known for sliding into the corners i won't be doing that right now but uh we'll certainly in a future video or make some photos showing how the bike is sliding into the corners like a supermoto needs to do so onwards and upwards dark so I had to turn on the, the front light but it should not influence the range too much. We outlasted the camera battery again, but these are the results. I finished with 90% of charge left, so I used 69% to do about 73 kilometers or 45 miles. That means the total range comes out at 105 kilometers or 65 miles. As you saw, these are real world results with fat tires, variable speeds, and lots of going up and down hills. Thanks for watching, and see you on the next one.